Good morning. Welcome to day negative two <clears throat> of our class, where we're talking of what applications of integration. So, um, how do you compute, in principle, any area using an integral? Well, you know how to compute and in the area under a graph. So you take your shape and you decompose it into areas under graphs. So I'm about to find the area between uh, between one parabola and another parabola. And even though this area is not area under a graph, literally, if I add the area, um, if I add another piece, I can see that it's the difference between the areas and two graphs. So the last thing I said yesterday was, um, if you look at the area under the shape I care about, it's the integral of, of this function. Um, and if I look at both of them together, both the red and the blue together, it's the area under the other parabola. So it's another integral. So if I want to do just the red area, um, what I do, what I need to do is subtract the whole thing minus the, the extra part. So the whole thing is one integral, the extra part is another integral. Uh, and, and that's what we got to do. So the area The area I'm looking for is the integral uh, of, of the one on the top minus the integral of the one on the bottom. <clears throat> so, uh, well, those integrals are not very difficult. The problem, the, the main problem is I don't know what, what the bounds are. I need to find this point. So how can I find the point where uh, two, two graphs cross? Could you use like squeeze theorem or? Oh, easier than that. This is this is not about limits or anything like that. Is it like whenever like you set their um, slopes or something equal to each other or? Just the functions yeah. equal to each other. So if they. If the if the graphs cross, if I have that y is x squared on one graph and y equals four x minus x squared two uh, on the other, uh, 
that means they have the if they if they pass through the same points, that means they have the same y coordinate. So um, they the the function must be equal. So we just got to solve this equation. So uh, if I put the x's on the, if I put everything on one side, so x squared minus 4x equals to 0. What, are the solution, what is the solution to this? I guess I could divide by two. How do I solve this equation? It's a degree two equation. Is there like that formula of like um forgot the name of it, but it's kind of like the it's like whenever like like it's I don't know like a squared minus like a no not that I can't think of the name. Just give me a moment. What would you Google? I don't know. Google would struggle to figure out what I'm thinking of right now. Okay, well then that's a problem. If you can't express it enough to to Google it, um, I think you mean the quadratic formula. So, um, so this will just give you the solutions. Um, a, A is going to be 1, B is negative 2, and C is 0. So this is to solve the equation AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0. So um, B, so negative 2, neg negative B is positive 2 plus minus the root of negative 2 squared, which is 4, and the, the other part is 0, divided by 2. So 1 plus minus the 1. So the solutions are 0 and 2, and you can check. You make x equals 0, you get 0. You make, you make x equals 2, you get 2. You could also just look at it and factor it, like you often do. So I guess you need two numbers that multiply to 0 and add to 2, um, which are 0 and 2. OK, well, um, that means that the parabolas cross were x equals 0 and x equals 2. So. Um, So I guess at zero and at two, they cross. Um, I should also figure out, I guess, which is which is uh, higher in here. 
So how can I figure out which is higher? Like, what do you mean higher? Like, I'm drawing them like this, but which is which is the red one and which is the blue one? Maybe you can use a second derivative test for the concavity. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so if I do y equals x squared, the first derivative is 2x and the second is 2. So this one is pointing up. If I do the second one, I get um, the first derivative is 4 minus 2x and the second one is negative 2. So this one is pointing down. So I guess this means um, this is the red one. And this is the blue one. Okay, so I do. I have to do the integral of the one of the the one that has the bigger integral, the one on the on the top, minus the integral of the one on the bottom. That's the area I want. Um. And I can just, you can combine two integrals that are summed together. So I can just turn this into one integral. All right. Um, so that's all I need to do. So what do I do now? Now we're solving an integral part this in your exam. How do you do a definite integral? I mean, I guess this one, has, I don't think really have to do use substitution, so I guess we can just find uh, indefinite integral of like, um, uh, so. and it's like the antiderivative. So what's the antiderivative of this? 2x squared minus, uh, Two over three x to the cubed. Mm -hmm. So um, why does this work? Because the derivative of what Dustin just told me is the original function. You take the derivative, you get four x minus uh, two times three divided by three x squared. So what you gotta do is find an antiderivative and then and then plug in the endpoints. Plug in zero, plug in two, and subtract. So uh, two times two squared minus two times two cubed over three. Um, and then when you plug in zero, you're just gonna get zero. <clears throat> so the answer is, um, the answer is 8 minus 16 divided by 3. Which is uh, 2 
and two thirds. Let's see if I believe it. Could this be uh, an area of um, of two and a half units, two and a half squares? Um, Well, um, the whole, so if it, it fits inside a two by four rectangle, well, and the rectangle has area eight. Um, so I guess the question is, does this fit kind of four times into a rectangle? More like three times. And probably like, probably like if I go like this, I'm sort of convinced that this could be 2.67 and this could be 2.67. I believe it. I don't know how good you are guessing areas. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Any questions? So in principle, we should be able to do every, um, just any shape that you can think of, you should be able to put between enough graphs um, that you should be able to compute the area. So um, how about this one? Um, area uh, between y equals x minus one and y squared equals two x plus six. Um, so um, I should try to, I should try to draw it first of all. And I mean, of course I could use a computer, but I want to see how good I can do. Um, so um, I can do. I mean, the first the first one is a line. The first one I can draw for sure. Um, it has slope one and. It passes uh, to zero, negative one, for example, if I make x equals zero. So it goes through here at slope one. So this is the line. Now, this is a parabola. Um, 
what do I notice about it? I notice that when you make um, yeah. but when you replace y y negative y, I get the same thing. So it's going to be symmetric, but symmetric this way. Maybe I can write it as I can solve for x, right, like this, and just, I don't know, plot a bunch of points. If y equals 0, x equals negative 3. If y is plus minus 1, x is negative 5 over 2. If y is plus minus 2, x equals negative 1. So, um, one, two, so here is five and a half. If y equals negative two, it's negative one. So, so the parabola goes like this. Oh, it's a really good picture. Good job, me. Um, so now that I drew them, I know what it, what the area between them means. I can I can see it right here. So um, the question now is how to write this area as as some integrals and. And there's more more than one way to do it. And well, some are better than others. Um, so this is the area. So um, I guess if this is going to be between two graphs, I should look at the, the half that is on top. And the half that is on the bottom. And those, I mean, the red line and the yellow line both pass a vertical line test. So they are functions, they're just, um, let's see what functions they are. So this is a parabola. Um, so the parabola was y squared equals two x minus six plus six. <clears throat> which I guess means, um, well, how to write this as a function? Uh, what I should do is solve uh, for y. So y is, I guess the positive for the negative square root of 2x plus 6. Uh, which one is it? I mean, if I write plus minus, that's not a function because it has two answers. It should have only one. So which one? Uh, is it positive or negative? Positive. Uh, yeah, thank you, Matthew. Um, so the positive one, if y is positive, it's that means it's on top of the of the x-axis. If y is negative, that means I'm getting the bottom half. So um, 
the answer is a positive. Okay, so that's, I guess I, get, I know how to take the integral of that function now that I know u substitution, but um, what about the, the bottom parts? It's like a piece of that parabola and then a line. Um, so this looks terrible. This looks, um, this looks like it's a piecewise function. Um, it looks like the negative part of the parabola. And it looks like the line some other time. So I could do this, but it's just going to be very, very unpleasant. So uh, I have another way of doing it, which is much better. You have your line and your parabola. And what you do is instead instead of writing y equals f of x, write x equals a function of y, which right now for, for this one, it's going to look much better. So I guess flipping uh, x and y is sort of like looking at the at the symmetric picture. Um, but I mean, you don't have to draw it flipped. <clears throat> so uh, just, I mean, just imagine it flipped. So then I'm between one graph, which is the parabola, Uh, which is y squared uh, minus 6 over 2. And another graph, which uh, is just a line. So um, instead of top and bottom, you have left and right. And the left graph is, is a parabola. Uh, the parabola was y squared equals 6x. Um, plus 2. Uh, no. What? 2x plus 6. To write um, x as a function of y, now you solve for x instead of y, like we did before. So x, 2x is y squared minus 6, and x is y squared minus 6 divided by 2. And the right graph is the line y equals x minus 1. So um, to to write uh, x as a function of y, you just solve for x. I know how to solve this one for x. x is y plus 1. So, um, so I'm finding the area between these two graphs, and that's going to be uh, subtracting, uh, doing the integral of the difference.
So the area between the graphs is the integral of the difference. Because, well, um, I guess, uh, I guess I should um, explain that in a picture. So, um, What do you get if you take the integral of y squared minus six divided by two? So now it's the integral with respect to y. Uh, and it's the integral well between two points that I don't really know. Oh, there's another, there's another chunk here. So the area under under the graph uh, is the is the yellow bit. I guess um, we could flip the picture. And then this part is going to be yellow this part is going to be blue so it's the uh, it's positive the area above the above the the axis And then you subtract the area below it. So it's the yellow part minus the red part minus the black part. The integral of, of the equation of the line is the part that is uh, above, which is yellow plus blue minus the part that is uh, below, which is the black part. So um, when you subtract them together, guess what, you get the red and blue. Oh, well, I, I went the other way. Um, when you do the one on top minus the one on the bottom, you get blue plus red, everything else cancels out. And the blue area plus the red area is what I'm trying to find. <clears throat> okay. So, um, I should say, um, the area between y equals f of x and y equals g of x is the integral of one minus the other. Uh, if one is on top of the other. That just always works. You don't need to go drawing these pictures every time. <clears throat> okay. So uh, this is the integral I'm doing.
So, um, just like before, I don't know what the nouns are. Uh, so I need to find the points where the two graphs meet. So um, just like before, to see when uh, when the two uh, the two graphs have uh, meet, you need to find the points on the graph with the same coordinates. So you need to have x equals i plus 1 and x equals y squared plus, uh, minus 6 divided by 2, which means that y plus 1 is y squared minus 6 divided by 2. Uh, so I think I can solve that equation. 2y plus uh, 2, or maybe, so multiply by 2. Um, everything. Uh, so you have two y plus two equals y squared minus six. So zero is y squared minus two y uh, minus six minus two. So y squared minus two y minus eight. So, um, how can I solve this equation? Well, it's um, it's quadratic again. So, you can stare at it and find the two numbers whose product is negative 8 and whose sum is 2. Or you can use the formula, the quadratic formula. If you don't like having to guess. Uh, 2 plus minus the root of 4 plus 4 times 8 divided by 2. That's 2 plus minus the root of 36. And that is 1 plus minus 3, which is uh, 2 and 4. Uh, well, negative, negative 2. So this turns out to be y equals negative 2. This turns out to be y equals 4. What? So uh, finally, The area uh, the area between the two is the integral now I know from where to where of the difference of the two functions y plus one minus uh, y squared minus six divided by two. I guess for the first time, the letter is not x. Um, so, I mean, this is a polynomial. I'm going to be able to do it um, just using the power rule. But maybe I should simplify it first. So fractions, um, oof, let's be careful. So there's negative 1 half. So this is the same as negative 1 half times y squared minus 6. Um, and, and now this is one half y squared plus, there's two minus signs there, plus uh, three. So this is the integral of negative one half y squared uh, plus y plus four. All right, so. I need to find the antiderivative of that function. What is it?
or at least how this would begin. What is the antiderivative of negative one half y squared? You can go outside the integral. So if I want to find this indefinite integral, this is the same thing. I mean, you can't put it in front. It's only multiplying the first one. So it's only go multiplying it by the, the everything else. But it could go, we could just do the antiderivative of y squared and multiply it. And that's going to be y cubed over 3. So that's the first term. What about the antiderivative of y? What's for the word two? What's for the word two? Thank you, Sam. Um, and what about the antiderivative of four? Or y. All right. So this is what we need to plug in. And you can see that this is correct because when you take the derivative, you get the original function, which is what we needed. Uh, so plug in four, plug in negative two, subtract. Oh, Negative one half um, be careful with the minus sign. And well, whatever this is. <clears throat> Oh. Apparently, this is eighteen. Do I believe that? So I believe that uh, that is this is negative one half times sixty four divided by three plus eight plus sixteen minus um, and then this was. Uh, Well, negative positive one half times eight divided by three plus two. Oh, this was negative two. Uh, minus eight. So negative 32 divided by three plus 24. Minus uh, four thirds uh, 
30. Um, minus of, oh, that is 18. All right. <clears throat> oh, moment of truth. Is this 18? Uh, so x plus y squared. Minus six divided by two. So that's uh, to the right of the parabola. And that's to the left of the line. Um, could this be have area 18? Well, this. Um, Maybe. I can kind of believe it. Um, so this triangle has base six and height six. So this triangle has area 18. Eighteen square units. Um, the whole so this whole rectangle has area forty eight is base eight and high six. Um, this triangle has. Uh, it's two by two, so yes, area two. And how about I just count squares? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's say six, seven, eight, nine, nine and a half, ten, ten and a half. Sorry, nine, seven and a half, eleven. So I have eighteen, two, and eleven. Uh, that is thirty one. Um, so the the red area. is 48 minus 31, uh, which is 17. Um, so that area is probably 18. Good job. Good job, me. So satisfying with things look correct. All right, um, so that's it for today. So today, um, I I have office hours at 